Hey folks, this is Dre, Recovery One Drones. Of late, I've been working with a MLED uh, surveying G GNSS system. And I uh, just want to give you a little insight on what I've been going through for the last month. So as always, hang on, enjoy the ride. Please subscribe. Thank you. There's one thing I've learned in this journey of being a drone operator, business operator in general, that the constant need to learn is very great. If you plan on being a commercial Part 107 pilot operating a business, you have to be willing to step forward and uh, present yourself and always be accepting of new things that are happening out there are basically you don't know everything. So my journey uh, on this where I'm at now started about two months ago. I was given a phone call asking me to uh, that I want to join this group of individuals to work under a surveyor. And I will say right up front, I am not a surveyor. I am not an engineer, principal engineer. Uh, my background as far as my formal education is in law enforcement. I have a degree in criminal justice. But I do have the past 20 years uh, working in the construction industry from paving to uh, working with grade checkers, uh, operator, everything from the scrapers, backhoes, front loaders, you name it. I probably operated. The only thing I didn't operate uh, at, a, I would say, a uh, competent level is the uh, grader so and that takes quite a bit of skill in itself but i've handled quite a bit of about a fair amount of machines in my day so six years ago i got into this drone business and uh like i say it has evolved uh where i'm at now and like i can say uh, i can i'm pretty much happy with the progress i've made but now i'm into almost back into where i was at uh 20 years ago working on the ground again out on job sites. Now, the job that I'm tasked to do uh, for this surveyor, uh, for this company, is that basically we're the, we're the grunts. Uh, he'll go out and set the known points at a site, and we may come behind him and set GCPs, we may most likely, in many occasions, we go out and we will repair GCPs, uh, replace GCPs with, with newer ones, whatever the case may be. So I don't want anybody to be confused that I'm going out doing calculations and 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 so forth. Not the case. We're just we're just kind of like the groundkeepers of the sites. And as we go out and do all these different types of maintenance work on a site, we also fly the site. So it's a double dip. Uh, situation where we get paid to do the uh, repair work on the sites or maintenance on the site and we also get paid additionally for our flights of those same sites so there's uh the system that i should say the system that we were asked to purchase is the emulet rs system uh, mainly the rs2 uh, receiver base station whatever you want to call it but basically gn gnnss uh receiver uh, when i talked to the company that i purchased it from told them what i was going to be doing they sold me a uh, rs2 plus along with a reach rover nothing wrong with that like i say i'm a little bit naive to what the equipment is i've heard of a few others you got uh uh, was it uh, Trimble? You have Topcom. You have a few others out there that are high dollar ones. You're talking about the outfitted uh, Trimble system costs you somewhere in the area of fifty thousand and up. So uh, the Emlet system is kind of like allows you to get in at what they consider a budget level of a couple thousand dollars, and uh, you can go forward when go forward from there. So as always, I like to do a deep dive into what I'm doing so I can learn as much, be as knowledgeable as possible. So I know there's going to be some hiccups along the road and hiccups is definitely what I've been getting. And some of it is just basically lack of communication uh, between uh, manufacturers and, and, and end users. And that's the sad part. 
Uh, when I purchased this item, I was a little I was a little excited at the fact that the RS2 Plus is uh, comes with a SIM card, so you're supposed to be able to get a SIM card for it, and uh, and be able to be its own own independent base station without the need of relying upon Intrep systems. Uh, most of the videos that you will see out there talking about GNSS systems all talk about using Intrep, 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 Intrep. Well, my experience with Intrip is not very positive for the least. I bought my first RTK drone back in 2021 with the Maverick uh, Enterprise Advance. Um, I have several Intrip stations uh, in my area because uh, our Intrip system here in California is based upon uh, the university system and tracking uh, seismic activity. So there's, there's quite a few of them uh, along any fault lines here in California. So you can't, you know, basically you'll trip over some in some areas. There are so many out there. But the problem is, is that they're inconsistent and in them sending out correction data. So you can be out there in a flight, uh, be connected initially, and then you could lose connection with your flight and you'll get a big warning on your screen saying RTK failed and it'll give you the option to, to come back and land and reconnect, or you can continue to flight without RTK. Well, that's neither an option in many cases because RTK is the whole purpose of the flight for the accuracy that you can get by using this process. So like I said before, getting a SIM card for this thing was a very high priority for me and getting this thing up and running. That was the first hurdle that I went through. So me saying, I said, I went to my local provider, uh, my uh, cell phone system brought my device in. So I didn't want to be any kind of uh, discrepancy or errors or whatever, buying what I need to buy. Unfortunately, uh, the people you run into are not knowledgeable about such devices. Many of them didn't know what it was. I'd explained to them what it was and told them this is, most likely what I need based upon information I have learned about it. That didn't pan out. So I was getting a little frustrated with that because that happened for about almost a two week period, going back and forth with the manufacturer, which I asked them time and time again, what is the, uh, what cards, SIM cards, what SIM company, whatever the case may be, do you recommend? Or is there a certain ones you recommend? They couldn't tell me. All they were saying that is supposed to work with my provider, which mine is AT&T. And I told them when I talked to the AT&T text, I gave them the IEMI number. They said that number is not even compatible with their, their systems. So I'm at a standstill. So I have to give a shout out to the people at E38. They are, a, a, I say reseller of uh, GNNS, GNSS systems. And they put me on the right track of saying that I needed a SIM chip that is specifically made for GPS systems. And that what got me led to a company I found on eBay that sells SIM card chips, uh, very affordable. I think I paid seven bucks for it. My monthly fee is about $16 a month, unlimited data that actually works in all types of GPS for, for GPS systems for vehicles, handheld devices, and GNNSS systems. So that was one of the big hurdles I had to get over right there because I was very frustrated. Because like I said, I've used in-trip stations before and they're just not consistent enough for me to be comfortable of uh, the reliability of getting the data that I need to have a successful flight. And now I'm out here shooting GCPs trying to get coordinates uh, to add, add to the data so I can send back to the surveyor. And uh, it's just not working. This wasn't working on a consistent basis. I went out to a job uh, about a week ago and what should have been no more than two hours, three hours, I had to replace four GCPs, shoot the, shoot the data there on each one. I should have been out of there in two to three hours. I spent a total four and a half hours the first day, another three hours the second day when I went back. And that was very frustrating because I, and I said, I didn't really 
finish everything because I couldn't get a consistent signal from the arc, uh, the in-trip stations. So that was very frustrating. And when I talked to the people, then all of a sudden, the, all the information comes out about, oh, you need to have a second receiver. You need to use uh, LoRa type antennas, all these different things. And I'm thinking in my head, okay, when I was asking these questions prior to asking you guys what would be the setup that I need to have, you guys were, whatever you got, you got, and you should be okay, you know? And that was kind of upsetting to me, but let me move on. So right now I'm still in the process of testing uh, the system. Uh, I have several job sites that I go to on a monthly basis to fly progression work. So I take the, uh, the base station out, I hook it up, see what kind of solution I get. And for you to get a, a, a good reading, you need to get down to a fixed solution. Single solution doesn't, is not gonna cut it. A float solution is not gonna cut it. But when you're trying to set the points in the software, it, it demands that you have a fixed solution. So is either you have to wait until you get one. And, and basically when you see these guys online, a lot of people you see online, they say, oh yeah, I get a fixed solution within minutes. And I'm sitting there saying, well, why am I spending three, four hours out here trying to get a fixed solution if you're telling me it's supposed to have within minutes? But like I said, that, that's just test situations, known situations they have to where they have been to these locations before, testing equipment there. And it's a strong enough signal that they, they get uh, you know a fixed solution very quickly. So like I said, I'm due to go back out again uh, to set about six GCPs. And I got to do some painting on some on, uh, on the street. I think two on a sidewalk. And I have one target, one I got to put out in the middle of the uh, development. So that is my next step there. I'm just hoping that now that I have the right SIM card, it can get its own uh, GPS coordinates and, and serve itself as its own information hub. And I should have the second receiver showing up here today. It's supposed to come yesterday, but hopefully it comes today. UPS said they had some kind of railroad incident somewhere, or whatever the case is, but it should be delivered today. But uh, this is Dre with Cover One Drones. Just letting you guys know this is where I'm at. This is where I kind of saw myself going. And I'm very happy uh, of the progress that I've made over, the, especially the last two years, uh, going in this direction. And then uh, hopefully the journey will continue. And I tell people who are trying to get into this business, I tell them this, your business plan is not about how you start up. It's just where you want to be several years down the road. You should have a business plan for your first five years, 10 years, 15 years, up to 20 years to where you see yourself going with your progress. I don't care if you're selling doorknobs and broomsticks, or you doing drone work or drone related work where you use a drone and part of the work that you're doing, that you have a you have a business plan that spans out at least a minimum of 20 years and you have uh, minor goals, at least five year windows that you're seeing. That way you can monitor your progress of where you're at you can reevaluate your plan on what you're doing. And if you need to change up or something else is going on and like everything else that is happening for as legislation and so forth, they could throw a wrench into what, what you're doing. At least you have that time to evaluate. So as always, this is Dre with Cover One Drones. As I always say, hang on, enjoy the ride. Please subscribe if you appreciate this information. Leave comments. I always get back to you, give you a heart symbol, everything else, so you know I'm good to go. Talk to you later. Bye.